Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today is an interesting story. And one of the oldest cloud music companies folded very randomly and very suddenly. And it was an interesting story. And I want to use it as a jumping point to discuss this whole idea of music streaming and what we can do. And even how, if you're technically inclined, you can do your own music streaming for yourself. that will be fun. So anyway, let's go ahead and first jump into the article. This comes from The Verge, a small Wisconsin company that stored thousands of people's CDs suddenly vanished. So this is Murphy. Now, I actually, after reading this article... I remember seeing commercials for them a long time ago. This is really when the internet was first taking off before music streaming was a thing. This company had this deal where you would mail in your CDs to them. They would rip and make copies of them and put them onto an account and you could stream them from you know, from their website and of course later apps and things like this. And so it basically became a streaming service for the music you owned. So I'm not sure how this would work if, you know, I, hey, I just bought new discs. Can I just mail you new discs? Well, what ended up happening is, you know, of course, the streaming services have just become so ubiquitous now that you can get streaming pretty much anywhere. And so this company just kind of decided, you know what? We're going belly up. Now, in their fairness, they did send out notification emails that things were going down, but people pretty much didn't, didn't act on it, whatever else. And all of a sudden, the company just this last week just vanished. Nobody knows where they are. They just went. So basically what they said is, hey, we have these CDs. We're closing the doors. We can mail them back to you, but it's going to cost. And, and it was pretty exorbitant fees. It was almost like price gouging fees for shipping. Really high rate of shipping. Or if you're in the Madison, Wisconsin area, you, they will schedule some times to come and pick up your collection directly. And pretty much nobody knew about this. And all of a sudden they just vanished. And they said any CDs that are still in the collection, it was either it was either the beginning of maybe it was the maybe it was like January first or something. Any CDs still in the collection would just be thrown away, and all of a sudden the services stopped. And some people have you know just recently, as of November seventeenth, just re-upped for annual accounts. So that's an interesting thing that uh, you know whoever this guy is had better run because um, if he actually took a year's worth of service for people and then folded the doors. I bet some people are going to be coming back to them unless they issue some refunds. But it raises this interesting question about you take all your music collection and then you give it to somebody else to stream. At least you still have the music collection, maybe, but only if you got your music collection back. If you didn't get your music collection back, you lost all your CDs. Now, for the life of me, when I, I, I remember back first thinking this and going, why would I do that? Now, you have to understand where we're coming from. In my generation, I grew up when cassette tapes were starting to become popular. And then I got a first original Sony branded Walkman, which was a Sony brand. We saw cassette tapes die and be replaced by CDs. And then CDs eventually got turned into, into MP3s. I want to focus on that po point for a moment. Because it's not as easy as now you drop a CD in and in three minutes you have your whole disc. Way back in that time, you actually had to run a series of DOS commands. It would actually r burn the CD off about a fourth of the speed. So if your CD was one hour, it would actually take four hours to rip the thing down. And then you had to run a separate DOS program to tag everything. <laughs> then you, you boot up... Um, Winamp, which you know what that would do to the llama. Um, and so that was kind of what the technology started as. And MP3s then came out and we started to see, we really did truly start to see the MP3s start to take over everything, which by the way, generally at least streaming quality or much lower quality than a CD. If you can get a chance to stop and listen to a CD, man, does it sound way better than a lot of the stuff you young guys, these Gen Zers are used to now. I feel like an old fogey again. But anyway, what I wanted to focus on today is looking at the, the proliferation of streaming and thinking back to our music collections. So why, like, I'm a minimalist. You'd think I'd have streaming services. I don't. Uh, because my desire to actually own and control things is better than, <clears throat> than the desire to not have them, especially since I will show you how I manage my CD collection, and it will, it might blow your mind. You might be like, well, that's obvious, but not everybody thinks of it, right? So, 
Uh, we'll get into we'll get into that. But why might one use a streaming service? Well, one big advantage is a streaming service will allow you to find new artists. That's a valid point that if all you're doing is listening to your own collection, you may as well just be within your own echo chamber and never growing out your your uh, desires. So in reality, a streaming service can help you learn new bands, which is great. The other reason, and uh, this was actually something that I didn't think of until I was having a conversation with a friend whose wife is, I mean, these potential potential future hoarding can- candidates, um, just so much stuff and so much stuff. When I helped them move into their house, their entire garage was full of boxes. I'm just like, dude, you got a lot of stuff. He's like, this is all my wife's crap. And for him, the streaming services means we don't buy new movies. We don't buy new music. It keeps less stuff in the house. I buy that argument. That's a valid argument. I personally would rather go buy the DVD, but very valid argument. I'm not going to um, go for that anyway. Um, the other interesting one, like if I were to get a streaming service, it would probably be an Amazon one because there's functions outside of the streaming service, but I really don't anyway. Then, of course, there's st- free streaming services. Um, I believe uh, Spotify, I think, has some free services. You got to listen to some ads, which is certainly a trade-off if you're low in money and still want to listen to to some of the bands you want. But there's some disadvantages. Some of those are you'll only get certain music. What if your favorite song gets pulled? What if it just disappears one day? That's kind of sad. It really is sad to to see that. In fact, I remember I really liked jumping onto YouTube, listening to one particular song. I just I just really enjoyed the song. One day I go down there and it's gone. Like, what, where'd it go? I mean, that was before I knew you could rip stuff off of YouTube. If I known that, I probably would have. But, you know, that's that. So what do we do with your collection? What do I do with my collection as a minimalist, but also as a person who likes to have control of my own things? Well... All of my CDs are right here, which doesn't look like a lot, but it is actually hundreds of discs. Um, And so I was, of course, like most young people, a music file in my younger days. So as I open this binder up here, I actually have the CDs and their accompanying books, those that have accompanying books. And so... Yeah, it's actually heavy. It's actually huge. Um, there's, I think this thing holds, this might be 400 CDs. No, I don't know. Maybe it's more than that. I forget. I forget how big it is. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, it might actually be 400 CDs and I don't have it quite full. I could still fit a few more in here. And of course I have, um, I keep the CDs. I keep the booklets. Um, but I throw out all of the, you know, all of the big hefty cases. And so this guy here will fit nicely. And I have one of these for, for music. I have one of these for DVDs. So I have two of these binders and they actually fit the music quite nicely. So is it a little convenient to access them? Well, no, not really. Because what I've done in my local network here is all of these CDs have been ripped off of the disks and put onto a central server. So if I go onto my central server, anywhere in the office, any device connected to my uh, to my uh, home network can actually access them. So if I go into my phone here, which does not have all of the, all of these things down, I can go into VLC. It's one of the reasons I use VLC. You can hit a local network button, and my NAS has this third option is just a uh, DLNA. I go into my music, and I can go into, let me go into my browse folders, go into my music, and then here is all of my music here. And I can just find some random thing and just go ahead and play it. And it'll play right from here which is so there's how you can manage it there how do you manage that oh would you stop playing thank you so how do you manage that if you are not in your home network well if you wanted to and you were so inclined you could actually do it in a virtual era in um 
uh, a Nextcloud account. So what you might want to do here is you want to go ahead and rip it. Now here on Linux, I use Ripper X. There's other tools as well. I like Ripper X because it gives us the ability to rip it, edit, modify it. And uh, there's some different settings in there. And uh, how long is our video going? Yeah, we're about 10 minutes. I don't want to go into exactly how to use that. If you guys want, I'll do a separate video on how to use uh, Ripper X to grab your, your stuff. But what we can do here is I can show you, um, let me get go ahead and get logged into Nextcloud and show you how that's going to work. So this guy is going to be its own server. Let me see if I have any music up there right now. There's no music. So what I'm going to do, let me just open up my network here. All right, let's go with, uh, let's go with something that's, uh, wouldn't be likely to hit a copyright claim in the event uh, it would have to happen to do that. So let's go with, this is a fascinating band up here in, uh, there so what we're gonna do let me show you my desktop view here so I just kind of went over and uh, just grabbed this sign here we can just kind of drag the music or do we oh I don't think I can drag it over from the network I think I have to drag it on the desktop first and then drag it over into the network from there all right So what we're going to have here in Nextcloud is we will have our song there in Nextcloud. And from inside of Nextcloud, you can actually play it. Okay. But any once it's on Nextcloud, you can actually open it up inside of your phone. And I can just go to my Nextcloud app here and refresh my files. And right here on my phone, I can just go ahead and click it, and it will, once it gets downloaded, then it will go ahead and play. There is actually a application you can get will, which will allow music streaming directly to it. Since I don't use that application, I don't bother with it. Um, but you can, so what this is doing here is it's downloading it, and then it's going to play it. There is an application you can put on your phone that's going to stream it directly from there, I believe. Um, I have used it in the past. Um, and so that is how you can go ahead and do your streaming from your own system, your own personal way. Um, it's going to take a, I'm not sure why it's taking so long to download. Uh, we're on my network, so shouldn't be taking that long to download. But anyway, it is. So that's anyway how you can do your own streaming. You can take your own collection. You can put it on a Nextcloud account, and then that will allow you to stream from your service. Um, in this case here, um, I used to do this all the time. I never remember having to download before, so maybe something changed in the app, or maybe I've just used a streaming app in the past. But anyway, there we go. Now we got it. Now it's playing on Nextcloud. And that's how you can accomplish uh, accomplish your streaming systems through your own platform, just by using a Nextcloud account, uh, streaming your own music and things like that. I'm going to delete that because I actually don't, um, uh, I actually don't, uh, use those functions for my next cloud account. So that is just a little bit about how we're working with streaming your music, your streamings, why you might want to stream, why you might not want to stream. Let me know your thoughts on all these in the comments down below.